Hi, I'm Astro. Some minor stuff to talk about. I've upgraded my VTube Studio to the Pro version, so right now I can use the iPhone tracking, which is a lot more smoother. But I guess the tracking is way too smooth that I have to really open up my mouth when I talk. My accent kind of changed there, but yeah, with this, I am looking forward to more live 2D projects in the future. But now let's get back to the main focus of the video, which is making a cutstone, one of my favorite food. So welcome back to a chill chatting episode of Astonished Animations, the food series. <laughs> Let's talk about some interesting facts of katsudon. There is a word katsu in Japanese that means to win. And it pretty much sounds the same as katsu in katsudon, but they have different meaning. And that's why a lot of Japanese students tend to have katsudon before tests or exams because they want to katsu, they want to win, they want to succeed. So next time if you have a test or an interview or something like that, Try to have cutstone beforehand. Maybe you're gonna do very well. If you can't have cutstone, you're probably gonna fail. Just kidding. Let's get back into modeling our cutstone. So the first thing to making our cutstone is a bowl. Uh, making a bowl is pretty simple. Um, make use of proportional editing, proportional editing. Uh, I can't even English, but I wanna make a very big bowl this time because I want a lot of rice in my cutstone. Um, I actually don't eat that much rice in real life but uh, I like how it looks having a lot of rice in my cutstone. So I'm gonna add some simple um, two-step shading onto the bowl. Just some basic setup, um, the diffuse and then shader to RGB and color ramp with two steps. And I'm gonna add some outlines onto this bowl later. Now I'm adding the outline material and then add the solidify invert hole method. Um, you can see that the outlines looked a little bit weird. Um, it's because I didn't I didn't recalculate the normals. And after I did, they look normal. So I'm gonna add some rice into the bowl right now. So it's pretty similar to the rice uh, that I did in previous videos. I have a video on how to make uh, stylized rice. Um, so if you wanna, you wanna learn how to make some rice. Um, you wanna know one of the ways to make rice in Blender. Maybe you can check out that rice video. So while I'm working on some rice, how are you guys doing? Um, I hope you guys are all doing fine. But recently, I'm having less time to work on my personal projects because in the morning, I have to go work on non-personal stuff. <laughs> it's basically work, but when I go home, I just feel way too exhausted. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the environment of the office. I always feel a little bit uncomfortable to be in the office. Maybe it's the poor ventilation. There's a lot of carbon dioxide stuck in my office. I don't know. And if I touch my bed after I take a shower, I can fall asleep in seconds, like literally. I don't even have the energy to watch anime or watch YouTube or play games or anything because I'm just way too exhausted and you know, all I have are the weekends and yeah, that's all the time I got to work on my projects. And I've actually worked on a few projects other than my own YouTube channel. I also make fan art on Twitter for those who don't know. I don't talk about that a lot on my YouTube because I think the audience from Twitter and the audience from YouTube is very different. Because on Twitter, I make fan art of VTubers. And I think on Twitter, people want to see more things related to VTubers. While on YouTube, I work more on my personal stuff, so I guess more people want to see some 3D stuff in general. Though I hope to do different things on YouTube as well, but I don't really advertise like my YouTube channel on Twitter. And on YouTube, I just talk about my Twitter occasionally. But if you are also interested in maybe fan art of VTubers, you can go to my Twitter and the link is in the description and also the homepage of my channel. So, right here I'm making some egg, um, some, I don't know, do, 
do you call it scrambled egg? Because it's not exactly scrambled egg, but basically I'm using a plane with different levels of displacement. So basically you give the plane some geometry and model it such that um, it kind of shaped, shaped like um, it's covering the rice. And then I'm going to give it some displacement modifiers with the cloud texture. And I'm going to have two displacement on this plane. So one displacement is going to have bigger noise and the other one is going to have smaller noise so basically some part of the plane is going to be um is going to have bigger chunks and the other parts are going to have smaller chunks so that's like egg but um you can see some rice poking through the plane but it's it doesn't really matter because when you you know when you put egg on the rice some rice does poke through so Right here, I'm experimenting with different combinations of modifiers. So basically, throughout this video, I'm just testing things out. And, you know, sometimes you get very unexpected results when you are just playing around in Blender. But sometimes, that result might be what you actually want. <laughs> sometimes you don't even know how you did it, but it, it's, it's, it's just done and it looks good. And then you can use that same procedure next time you work on something different. You know, it's it's like the nice little journey of art. You just discover new ways to make things. So right here we have some basic shading onto the egg with the glossy shader as the base because I want it to be a little bit more shiny. So the most shiny, the shiniest part will be white. And I have some Voronoi texture to add a little bit of detail onto the egg. Um, you know, it's very subtle, but it does add a little bit to the whole the whole look to the egg. But I guess somehow this egg looks more like cheese. I, I always feel like it's weird to have um, fried food combined with cheese and rice because I, I, I always need a little bit of moisture in the rice, I guess. It's, it feels extremely dry to just have cheese and fried pork chop on your rice because yeah but right here I'm working on the katsu and I'm gonna shape a plane into the shape of the katsu and then I'm gonna add those cuts where my where my individual pieces of katsu is gonna separate so I'm gonna use the command V the keyboard V to rip those edges so they are separated right now and then after uh, I shape the plane I'm gonna extrude the plane so it has thickness and I'm gonna add some loop cuts so um, to support the the overall shape of the pork chop so right here you can see the pork chop still looks a little bit more rectangular so I'm gonna modify some vertices so they look a little bit more irregular and then later we are gonna add some displacement so it's gonna look a little bit better than what we have right now so you can see the cuts the the edges on the cuts is way too smooth so I'm gonna add some supporting edges right there so after the subserve it looks a little bit more sharp around the cuts and now I'm gonna add a material, but I'm probably I probably will go back to the modifiers. Yeah. So right now I'm gonna add a displacement modifier with clouds texture to add a little bit of bump onto our katsu. So the shape looks pretty good right now. So I guess it's pretty much time for me to work on the shaders. And I'm gonna change the viewport colors so it's easier to tell. I have two materials, one for the breadcrumbs and one for the meat. So now I am going to assign all the materials to the corresponding faces of the model. I'm going to use the H key to hide part of the model so I can just assign the faces more easily. And Alt H to unhide the parts. So now I'm going to add some loop cuts around these edges because part of the breadcrumbs is eating into the meat part. So 
after that, I can start just adjusting the parts and then we can move on to the materials. Now for this material, I'm gonna first just preview the shading with some two-step shading. And later I'm gonna add a little bit more texture onto it. So for the meat part as well, I'm gonna use some two-step shading. Later we are gonna add some noise textures into it so it looks a little bit better but now back to the breadcrumbs all right so let's add some noise texture onto the bread breadcrumbs and I am gonna use a color ram to modify the colors and I can just copy the colors from from the lower color ramp and just adjusting from there adjust the colors until it looks good I try to make some shiny chunks on the on the katsu but I don't think it looks good so I just use some very subtle colors and it's okay it definitely looks okay now I'm gonna move on to the meat material and then also some noise texture I want to create those lines going across the meat so I'm just gonna squash the noise texture along the z-axis by scaling it up and now we have these lines I can just copy the colors from the lower color ramp and kind of mix the two color ramps for the final shader I'm gonna come back and um, adjust the colors again later you're gonna see you know a lot of times I'm gonna jump back and forth between different you know different workspaces Sometimes I'm gonna adjust the colors of the materials and sometimes I'm gonna go back to adjusting the models and stuff. So I'm gonna jump around a lot in this video, but I hope you guys could follow. So the katsu looks pretty nice at this point, but I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna take it one step further and use the trick. Yuma! Yes, 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 yes. I am going to use that rice technique onto the katsu. So just like the rice, I'm gonna scatter some breadcrumbs on top of the katsu. But unlike rice particles, which is more regular in shape, I'm gonna randomize the rotation and also the scale of the breadcrumbs particles because they look irregular. And I'm using an, an icosphere for the particle because we don't really need a lot of geometry when the particles are that small and if we just increase one more subdivision my computer is probably gonna explode or something yeah so now I'll add some materials onto the breadcrumbs I'm just gonna copy some notes from our main breadcrumbs material so now I'm gonna add a vertex group called density to limit where the breadcrumbs spawn because I don't want to I, I don't want the breadcrumbs to spawn on the meat so now I am going to assign the faces or vertices to limit the area but right here you can see there are still some breadcrumbs spawning on the meat it's probably because because of the subsurf modifier so instead of assigning the breadcrumbs to all faces I'm just gonna assign them to the middle faces like this. So basically leaving the rim of the katsu pieces. And now they are not spawning on the meat part. And that's pretty good. And now I can convert all those particles into meshes and combine them into one object. Then I can use the data transfer modifier to achieve that nice shading. I assign the main breadcrumbs material to the particles because I think that looks pretty nice. But now I'm gonna add some green beans to my cut stone because you know people add green beans onto their cut stones and more importantly without the green beans it looks a little bit boring without some veggies on top. It, it also doesn't look that healthy. I mean I mean that's just a few beans on top so probably not not that big of a difference but you know having veggies 
is really good for you it's healthy and it helps you helps you go to the bathroom <laughs> and you know you can prevent yourself from having diseases like acid reflux and stuff so yeah make sure to have more veggies in your diet so right here when I turn on the outlines of the main katsu itself you can see that the particles looked a little bit weird and that's because the normals of the outlines of the katsu is flipped and that is being transferred to the particles so I think I end up removing the outlines on the katsu itself but keeping the outlines of the particles themselves so that is kind of a trade-off So let's add a camera so we can render some nice 360 rotating renders. To render some 360 renders, usually what I do is to add an MT that rotates along the z-axis for 360 degrees. And then I'm just going to parent the camera onto the MT. And now I'm adding some outlines to the green beans, just some very subtle dark green outlines. How about some outlines on the egg as well? Everyone gets outlines because outline is the way to win. Oh god. Then I'm gonna go back to adjust the colors of the meat so it looks a little bit more natural. And make sure to look for references if you really need to know how to choose your colors because references are really useful. Maybe just type cuts down anime and you can find a lot of references. So now I'm gonna add some Voronoi texture, add some little bulbs of egg whites onto the egg. Because sometimes when you when you have cuts down, you can see that the egg mixture is not completely mixed. And they did that on purpose just to have some little chunks of egg whites on the egg. So Right now, I'm mixing two different sizes of Voronoi and then I can make some irregular shapes for the egg whites. So I'm just gonna keep messing with the Voronoi scale and also the color ramp that comes after that to achieve the result that I'm looking for. And then I'm gonna add the egg white on top of everything. And then let's adjust the colors for the egg again. And I think it's really until this point that I realized I'm using Filmic all the time. So when I switch it back to standard, the colors are just way too saturated. So I'm just going to use Filmic for this render. And I think you, you should probably use standard most of the time for um, NPR renders because the colors are a little bit more accurate under the standard standard color. Thing. I don't know what do you call it but so just like what I mentioned earlier I've added back some outlines onto the breadcrumbs of the katsu but I did a little trick in the outlines right here I added some shading into the outlines so I basically copied some two-step shading notes from the katsu and I pasted it onto the outline material and now I have two steps of colors in the outlines. Just make sure to flip the dark and light color in the color ramp because the normal of the outlines are flipped. And now our cuts down is done. Looks delicious. Other than this project, I've also been working on some projects with more like a realistic style. And I think I'm finally a little bit more free this month and I can finally catch up with the four episodes of Spy Family that I missed. Hopefully you guys find this video useful despite the fact that it's a chatting video. But I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye.